If you've been playing Black Myth Wukong at all, then you've probably heard or come across the hidden bosses within each chapter and the legendary items they drop that can help you with not only the end chapter boss fights, but also just simply any boss fight in general. Items like the Fire Cloth in Chapter 1 and the Wind Tamer in Chapter 2 are the most common examples that most people know. And while Chapter 3 itself decides to opt out of this, Chapter 4 brings it back with one of these items. But it is so much more than simply getting an item. If at any point during the chapter you try to look for this item, it will actually lead you into a whole new area up in the mountains, including hidden spirits, a hidden boss fight that actually drops recipes for you, a cool side story, and of course, an epic boss fight resulting in the chapter hidden item, which honestly is in competition for one of the best items in the game in terms of your L3 and R2 abilities. So we here at Direct Gaming are going to go over how to get to this mystical land and obtain the legendary vessel to not only help you with the final boss of chapter four, which by the way is up on the channel. So go ahead and click that link down below in the pinned comments, but to also help you in the end game and your new game plus if possible. My name is Talon and it's time to find the purple cloud mountain with all of its secrets. Now you can technically start this right away as you get into the catacombs of the level, but don't worry if you've gone further into the chapter. What you need to do is travel over to the pool of shattered jade shrine and go into the cave with the hanging spider web sacks. Feel free as always though to farm the XP here if you want to as this is the best place in the mid game to do this. When you finally continue through however though you will find a giant cocoon with a life bar around it. Simply bash the cocoon open until a mini boss pops out. Here you're going to want to take him down. It's nothing too crazy you haven't fought already especially by the time you're in chapter 4. So there's nothing really to go over in terms of taking this mini boss down. Once you finally do take him down though he will actually force his retreat and you won't see him for a while. Now go ahead and continue on through the main part of the chapter. As you continue on through the chapter you'll get close to the final Final boss and you'll come across the court of illusion shrine for this next part you're gonna need to be here follow the path that you're seeing on screen just by running past all the enemies don't worry they won't chase you for too long when you get to this particular location right here turn left if you wish to continue the side quest if you have time though i recommend turning right as there's also a spirit over there and some fun items when you finally turn left though head down the hill into the big cave that you see and that same mini boss that you saw beforehand will be there once again same thing as before though take him down but be mindful as you'll actually have to technically take him down two times because the first time you take him down you simply remove the arms on his back then he goes into his serious mode while this boss is a little fast it's nothing too crazy you haven't seen before using things like immobilize and, and timing your combos are going to help you out the most here use the transformation if you need to but otherwise take him down pretty easily once you finally take him down though he will reveal a painting that turns into a portal that will lead you into the purple clown mountain all right so we finally arrived at said mountain time for a very quick guide through the area and what you should be on the lookout for follow along the path until you find a snake in a tree pretty hard to miss talk to her a few times until the dialogue starts to repeat itself this is going to be important for later as with all npcs in the game when it comes to talking to them simply starting one conversation is not going to work you need to keep talking to them until you see the dialogue start to repeat then you know you've exhausted all of said dialogue usually i find around three times or so is the sweet spot but to be safe try it four times after that continue on until you come across this bridge that gives you two paths to follow left and right in the end, it doesn't matter which path you pick as they actually will converge back to being one path. So if you're trying to simply beeline it to the top of the mountain to fight the boss and get the item, go ahead and head left. However, if you head right, you'll actually find a spear to beat and you can absorb it, which is pretty helpful. And shortly after, you're going to find a pretty difficult boss that deals with poison. And if you win, you'll actually get a recipe and medicine from that boss. Trust me when I say this, though, this guy is a challenge. And if you don't feel like fighting him, don't worry head left like I mentioned beforehand. If you do fight him though and defeat him, simply continue along that path until you come in a fork in the road and that left path will basically converge with the right path. Going left on the other hand though is a little bit of a more normal path with some typical enemies you might fight, some secret chests you could look for, but basically continue on like you would any other path. Again, if you want the easiest path though, head left, don't head right. Continue along the path until you enter a small village. Once here, you will actually meet a dude who is looking for a particular item. In order to find that item, you need to explore the village. Now, I've heard it can either be in the area behind this NPC or off to the right in some of the houses. I found this item on the right side personally, but let me know in the comments below where you particularly found it. Simply kill the enemies you come across until you find an item you can pick up and boom, you're good to go. Return to the NPC and what a shocker, he actually betrays you and you gotta fight him. This fight, just like the previous mini boss though, is gonna be two rounds. Once as a human and once as this poison creature. He's not too hard, but just kind of keep in mind with the poison as that can spread throughout the entire battlefield, which can be annoying. So make sure you've got some pills or something to negate that. Once you defeat him, continue up the mountain. If you talk to the snake at the beginning of the area, like I mentioned beforehand, she'll actually appear after you take down this mini boss and she'll give you some cool little dialogue. 
This means you're doing everything right and you can continue on to the final boss. Continue to the top until you see what looks like a giant egg sack. Walk forward and you'll see this arena's main boss. Like the mini boss beforehand, this boss is going to have two stages. One that is normal, which is a bit of a preview to the real fight, which is going to be your stage two. Let's go ahead and break that down right now though, because I do feel I need to go over some of the attacks and how to avoid them. For round one, as this is an introduction, the boss has the following moves to look out for. A dive kick from across the arena that will actually cause him to trip, leaving himself wide open for a counter combo. A barrage of feather attacks that are super easy to dodge, typical beast style attacks including stomps, headbutts, bites, and more. Again, this is nothing crazy you haven't seen before, however, things get interesting if you did not happen to go on the right path towards that scorpion boss we talked about earlier. When you get the boss down to about half health, the aforementioned scorpion boss will actually appear in the field, and now you're thinking to yourself, oh crap, I gotta fight two bosses at once. However, that is not the case. If you want to, you can go and try and fight him if you want, but that's just going to get you killed and lose a bunch of your health. Honestly, just kind of stay to the back, keep your wits about you, and uh, let the two bosses take each other out. You'll actually see their health just go all the way down. Once that little skirmish is done between the two bosses, it's time for the second phase of the main boss. The second phase for the most part of said boss will take moves from part one and simply enhance them for this fight. For example, the barrage of feathers that you saw in the beginning not only increase, but don't stop after he simply throws them the first time. The boss will actually then jump up into the air and continue this attack. This particular attack will also love to crisscross sometimes, so you gotta be careful when you're dodging, and basically, you can honestly mash the dodge button when it's near the end of this particular barrage. Most of his basic beast-like attacks now have multiple attacks before he actually takes a break, and obviously, these do more damage. The boss also comes equipped with his own weapon that honestly kind of looks like his spine, where he'll basically swing the thing around on the ground to catch your legs, and he even do air attacks with it. These attacks can also be thrown horizontal and vertical projectile style to make sure you're ready to dodge and don't get caught with your pants down. One move that I found particularly annoying myself is when the boss takes his weapon and plunges it into the ground, except that the area effect of that particular move is bigger than what we just mentioned, so make sure you are running to back up. Using particular spirits that can either freeze them in place or help you get a lot of burn damage or shock damage are definitely going to help you here. Then once you do that, you can go in for some extra combos. Just like any boss though, using focus skills can actually help you with your heavy attacks and the boss will fall pretty easily and stumble over. Other than that though, this boss fight isn't too terrible, but I will leave a full unedited fight if you want to go ahead and take some points from above and see how it's done in real time.
Once you've taken this boss down, go ahead and claim your Crocodile Crowded Trophy and Achievement, and of course, the Weaver's Needle. This item will not only help you with the Chapter 4 end boss, but other endgame bosses as well, if you know how to use it. And there we go. That's pretty much all the big major stuff from the Purple Cloud Mountain. Again, if you want to take on the Scorpion boss, it is a little bit of a challenge, but it might be worth it. I didn't though. I let him fight it out with the main boss at the end and it worked out pretty easily. Now go ahead and take that item like I mentioned beforehand into chapter four and chapter five and of course chapter six at the end. Now I want to ask you, what are your personal thoughts when it comes to these kind of hidden secret areas? I personally found this one to be the coolest one as it actually took you into a painting into a totally separate area of the chapter. It did look really beautiful. And of course, if you want to see any more of our Blackmouth Wukong guides and videos, go ahead and check out the pinned comment and the playlist in the top right corner. With all that being said, though, I've been Talon with Direct Gaming. I hope you have a great day and week. Thank you so much for checking out the video. And if you enjoy this type of content and you want to help us reach our goal of 10,000 subs, make sure you go and hit that sub button as always as we try to upload as many videos as we possibly can. Again, thank you so much for stopping by the video, and I hope to see you guys all in the next one. Have a great day, everyone. Johnny.